uh, required a great deal of violence, and it produced not only food, but death. Um, and his estimate for the number of people who died, uh, again, his words, died in the era, the golden era of liberal capitalism, through the, you know, the imposition of global markets and food, is around 30 million people. So 30 million people were produced by a system of international capitalism that we now you know, we, we sort of think about as the global food system. Um, now, the, the, the point of observing that is, is to suggest that uh, when we think about global north and global south, we do need to be, think a little bit more, more historically. And of course, that's one of the things that the global food system uh, discourages us from doing today. Today, we are told that you know, if, if we're going to fight hunger and fight poverty, uh, what we need to do is, for example, to shop more ethically. Um, that if we go into our, you know, if, if we go into Whole Foods and buy something that is shade-grown and uh, you know, dolphin-friendly and tuna-compatible and uh, you know, pro bunny rabbit and go locust, um, it, it, it is in some way a, a concession, a way of, 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 uh, of combating the global food system. But of course, the, the minute we step into supermarkets, the, the minute that, that we allow ourselves to be seduced by this idea that individual consumerism will transform the planet, uh, we have fallen into one of the traps. And of course, if you look at you know, everyone's sort of associated pollution in China um, with uh, you know, sort of industrial effluent, the, 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 the single principal source of water pollution in China now is agriculture. The largest single source of, of water pollution in China is uh, industrial agriculture. Um, and what's interesting, I guess, about, about uh, China and China, you know, the, the transformations in uh, in China is, well, I guess, I'm, I'm really running out of time. I, I, I guess we're seeing the sort of move towards industrial agriculture and the, the dangers that that is wreaking, not just in China, but of course the, the destruction that already is uh, starting to impose in Africa. We were seeing a sort of a transnational land grab uh, in Africa in response to uh, the declining productivity in the industrial agricultural system. Uh, but in closing, I, I just want to suggest that there's something still interesting about this book, and it comes through uh, the legacy of an organization that I, uh, I think is, is tremendously important for us to think about now. If we're interested in I mean, you know, the, 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 what the corporate food system is producing in global north and global south, what it's producing is, above all, a politics that prevents us from addressing the real causes of the problem. What, what we see is sort of the Gates Foundation offering its, its various solutions here, Monsanto offering, you know, uh, uh, to, 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 to find what Jeffrey Sachs calls a gene for climate change. Um, and, uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, and of course, you know, the, 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 these are um, sort of woeful solutions. Um, but the organization I want to end with is an organization that took this book quite seriously, uh, and it had food at its center, but not at its core. Um, and that book, of course, is the Black Panthers. Sorry, that, that organization is the Black Panthers. Um, the, the Black Panthers, of course, was a food movement insofar as it, it, it understood that in organizing for social change, food played a, social, played a fundamental role. Uh, and they organized to make sure that there were um, uh, you know, breakfast services for, uh, for, for, for kids going hungry. But food was part of a bigger project of transformation, of dignity, uh, and of social change, in which some of these ideas played a part. Um, now, I, I think that, that what, what's interesting about that is that it, it's absolutely a, a much bigger vision for social change than simply going for the food movement and trying to change the food system. What, what, what the Black Panthers were, were, were interested in, and what a lot of peasant movements are interested in, what uh, Via Campesina and a number of allied movements are interested in, is this idea that, that in order to have things like food sovereignty, in order to be able to change the food system, we need to change a great deal else about how our food system works. And that's why I'm very excited to hear about them from our other two panels. Thanks very much. Thank you.